Hi everyone, thank you for your time and attention. Uh, my name is Nasir Majid and uh, I'm a medical consultant at Vita Neuro. I'm here in Mexico at the moment with Edward, who is our uh, returning patient. Um, this is his second spinal cord stimulation treatment. And the first treatment was for upper body function where we implanted a small <clears throat> neurostimulator uh, for his upper body function at cervical level. And uh, this is his uh, second treatment where he's getting the uh, same device basically for uh, lower body function. Um, so we are here basically to discuss his progress so far, his treatment, his expectations, and to answer any questions you may have regarding um, from a patient point of view. Um, so I will briefly uh, introduce Edward. Um, he had a C5 incomplete uh, um, quadriplegic spinal cord injury. Um, from incomplete, I mean he had a little bit of upper body function before his first uh, um, spinal cord um, stimulation treatment. Uh, this was around one year ago uh, in Thailand, and um, um, and uh, uh, he had a complete loss of vol volitional motor uh, control in his lower limbs. Um, so, um, so I, we will look into his progress he had been making uh, in last one year, and also um, we will see uh, how uh, much recovery he had been seeing uh, in this particular treatment here in Mexico. Um, so um, I will um, request Edward to maybe um, give us a brief introduction about uh, uh, basically himself and uh, uh, to start with how did he find us um, for his first uh, epidural stimulation treatment. Okay, yeah, uh, my name is Edward Lopez, I'm 23. I was injured in April 2018 and uh, that was in USA. Then when I went to my rehab hospital in Los Angeles, uh, you know, the the attitude and the hospital was like, well, let's see how much you recover and then build a lifestyle. And I said, well, you know, what do you mean? What if I don't recover naturally? Aren't there any treatments or anything that I can do? Any surgeries so I can improve? And they said, oh, well, we don't know about that or um, it's not available yet. So I started searching for myself and then I found out about um, epidural stimulation and what it could do for people, looking at videos, looking at journals. And then uh, I saw that it's available in Thailand commercially. And that's when I started getting in contact with them and seeing if they could put it in my cervical spine. Because I know that wasn't done before, or it was done, but not many times. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I started to get in contact with them to go and get the surgery about a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, so we understand this is your uh, second spinal cord stimulation. Yeah. Um, so could you please tell me um, your excitement maybe, uh, you know, from basically being a third patient in the whole world who had received two stimulators for spinal cord injury. And uh, what did you see from the first uh, treatment? Because that's important for you to decide before you could go ahead with the second stimulator. Yeah, uh, I was really excited because it's in Mexico and I'm in LA, so the flight's only like three hours. And then I also was excited about uh, being able to move my legs because I know that legs are a little easier than the arms because it's more like just bend and extend when it comes to the legs. And I also have family here, so I was uh, excited about that too. And I already know everybody at Epidural Stimulation, the, the people that work here, um, like Dr. Nasir, the therapist. So I was very confident with them. I know that they'd be able to help me do it with the mapping and with the surgery and the treatment and everything. So, so I really feel very comfortable here. And also I'm Mexican, I speak Spanish. So I felt at home. And for the first surgery, in my arms, I really saw a lot of progress with it. Um, with uh, being able to hold my left arm in the air a little when I bend it, being able to grab and drop stuff, seeing a lot more strength. And looking, I'm looking forward to stepping and walking in the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, so here, one of the technical things I would like to um, I, I would like to um, highlight was a challenge. First of all, from surgical point of view, it is a little bit challenging to implant two stimulators, two 
basically same type of neurostimulators in the body so there are some surgical considerations of course we had to keep in mind then after the surgery uh, the programming our aim is basically the ult ultimate aim from the treatment is to program both stimulators at the same time in coordination with each other so so this would give uh, patients like edward for example uh, an ability to to use both upper body and lower body muscles simultaneously without any interruption between the the flow of uh, electrical currents from two stimulators and of course it would be able to stimulate all of the muscle groups required for patients to, to grab onto something like hold onto something like a walker walking frame and use their lower limbs to take steps so that's the ultimate eventual goal from the treatment and we are looking forward to of course achieving this goal in, in near future uh-huh um so um so before of course uh, you know um um it was easier for you to make a decision for your second treatment uh, oh. but before you decided to go ahead for first treatment did you have any doubts in your mind you know it, it must have been a very big big decision you know so how did you basically uh go across the line you know in terms of deciding to go all the way to thailand yeah. for, for your treatment yeah, um, i wasn't too skeptical because i did their investigation right saw the testimonials and looked at reviews outside of the website so I knew that it was a uh, very real but more my, my my parents were a little skeptical about it but after they did their independent research they saw that it's real and uh, talking to them on the phone and getting into contact with former patients then uh, they uh, they were I was getting more comfortable going there but still a little nervous because it's in home of the country but if anybody wants to like ask me questions you can. my instagram is lord Posole, so you can see that it's real it's not like a scam or anything because some people might think that i know it's nervous going to another country for surgery and paying some money so but yeah i was very confident just doing the research and and looking at reviews okay thank you um and uh, from from medical point of view, actually, one of the most important quest, questions we get from the patients is uh, um, who is a candidate for this kind of treatment. So I would like to take just two minutes, uh, you know, to to basically highlight uh, the treatment is for both uh, complete and incomplete uh, spinal cord injury patients, but it's for traumatic spinal cord injury patients. So when we say spinal cord injury, there are many different types. Um, uh, traumatic spinal cord injury as a result of let's say car accident or sports accident is the most common type uh, but then there are some patients um, who had uh, a spinal stroke for example as a result of like blood vessel rupture um, some patients they have ischemia um, you know uh, like lack of oxygen to the um, to the to the spinal cord some some patients they have infection of the spinal cord or inflammation of the spinal cord so generally speaking those patients who are suffering from non-traumatic spinal cord injuries are not uh, ideal candidates for epidural stimulation but some of them they may qualify uh, depending upon uh, the uh, the actual mri scan findings um, so uh, but for those patients of course we do have other options available like stem cell treatment um, and uh, um, so so um, so continuing uh, the, the the second treatment for Edward. Um, so so did you find the procedure and you know the mapping process as smooth as it was your first treatment? Or you know what what are the major uh, differences or you know um, similarities you would like to highlight in terms of your your treatment for the first stimulator and the second stimulator? Well, yeah, I was very comfortable going into surgery the first time, but the second time I wasn't nervous at all because I know that the doctor. Um, his name is Rodrigo, right, Dr. Rodrigo? Dr. Rodrigo Mercado, He's yes. He's one of the best ones for, in planning the surgery for uh, the stimulator for pain here uh, in the Americas. So, you know, he's a very professional. And in planting the epidural stimulator for a movement is somewhat similar. So I wasn't worried at all. My scar healed good. I didn't have any negative side effects. And as for the mapping, it went good. Um, all the therapists here, they're very innovative. They care about you. They like to um, think outside the box and dedicate a lot of time to your therapy. And uh, they're new now, but they're already pretty smart and they understand how the stimulator works and how mapping works. So 
the everything I find as well as mapping is from this way too. Mm -hmm. No problem. Mm -hmm. So elaborating a little bit more on this specific topic, uh, we at Veritan Neuro um, try to put uh, um, patient first, you know, in terms of uh, um, our, our focus. Um, so did you, um, did you find it useful um, for, you know, being asked basically and being informed um, at each step of your treatment or, you know, uh, would you like to maybe elaborate a little bit more? Uh, if the communication was well or if there, there had been any you know lack of communications or any any misunderstandings in terms of communication uh no i could always if i ever had any questions i could always ask the, the doctor here dr beatrice or or dr nasir there was uh no problem with communication just a little bit probably with my with my bed the bed i got i didn't really like it so they they were able to give me a next one uh, a better one the next day so just any problems I had, the doctors were always very open and always there to help me with any problems I had and look for solutions. Mm -hmm. And in terms of your future, um, basically uh, future uh, uh, plans in terms of your rehabilitation, are you mentally prepared, are you physically prepared uh, to, to, to go through the extensive work you require from, you know, from now on uh, back in, back in, back in your, your, your hometown? Um, and uh, and uh, and ultimately, of course, what are your your uh, you know goals from the treatment from from your point of view? Well, yeah, I'm ready, huh? Because I before my injury, I did martial arts, so I love working out. I love the feeling of being sore, uh, being tired, of feeling my muscles work. So that's no problem for me. I I, I could always put in the work. The work's no problem. I love working out, and as for the future, well, well I want a full recovery. You know, I don't, I don't care how many years it takes or how, how long it's going to take. Uh, that, that's the end goal. And I feel that the stimulator is very uh, important to my recovery. I also got stem cells and exosomes. Exosomes are new treatment. So I'm really optimistic about what that might do, how much it might help me. And I look forward to getting more in the future uh, if necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I okay. So we believe uh, there are a certain group of patients with traumatic spinal cord injury patients who may benefit from this kind of treatment. Uh, you know, because we believe it can improve the quality of life. You know, it can restore certain level of mus muscle uh, function back. It can improve autonomic function like cardiovascular function. Uh, you know, it can treat autonomic dysreflexia. Yeah. It can reduce the risk of um, secondary complications in the future, like uh, scoliosis, you know, um, are having, a, you know, a, a premature death, unfortunately, uh, many of the spinal cord injury patients, you know. So do you, do you feel the same way because you had been basically working with the stimulator for, for about one year now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I went to Thailand, before I went, I had uh, really bad scoliosis, not really bad, but noticeable scoliosis. And then doing the trunk contour to side this, my scoliosis got better, as well as my lung strain, thanks to the stimulator, being able to move around the lungs to this thing still. It loosened up the phlegm and helped me with my cough and with quality of, quality of life, yeah. Because there were some days where I couldn't use my stimulator and it was so boring because I, I just just sitting there doing nothing. So being able to exercise, get my muscles stronger, and uh, build more muscle on uh, my body, it was it felt really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so just for, for our viewers, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to post here and we will try to answer. So, Edward, can you maybe walk us through a typical day, like typical treatment day uh, here? Um, for you know, like a yeah. regular day, what kind of activities do you go through and what does it feel like from a patient point of view? So I wake up around 8 a.m., eat breakfast, and then at 9 a.m., I start mapping, which ends at 11. And during that time, I'm either in bed or in the wheelchair. And and then I'm uh, doing the exercises with two therapists. Then after that, I eat lunch and get ready for either PT at 3 and then mapping at 4, from 4 to 6, then I eat some more, and watch TV or use my phone, 
and go to sleep, but the whole time and the exercises the therapists are uh, dedicated to me and they're always helping me move my legs and seeing what works and what doesn't work for the next day. And I just repeat the process and, and I notice my legs getting strong. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so we got a question here. Um, Basically, it's again about medical evaluation. Um, our viewer is asking what kind of medical information uh, is required for evaluations, right? So I believe uh, it's MRI scan, you know. Um, um, so just, just you know, just to, I can answer. Um, so the most important um, um, investigation for us is the spinal MRI scan. If some someone who who had, uh, let's say, a metal object in the body which is not MRI scan compatible then we go for CT scan but which is not ideal so ideal method is always a spinal MRI scan uh, in some cases we may request an EMG or some other extra tests but but most of the patients uh, a spinal MRI scan is sufficient for us to evalu evaluate and of course some clinical information um, to, to see if someone is a candidate for this kind of treatment or not um, and we got a question from from Subhas. So basically, he's asking about a, a you know, a, um, like um, a comparison in terms of the cost and expenses between your first treatment and your second treatment. Yeah. Uh, the first time, I didn't get stem cells, so I think it was around maybe seventeen thousand dollars. And this time, it was ninety thousand dollars because I got access on the stem cell treatments. And the plane cost was more well, expensive for Thailand and a lot cheaper for you because it's only three hours in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So without stem cells, uh, like 7,000 is maybe a little more. And with the stem cells and exosomes, like 90,000. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, f just from medical point of view, just to, um, um, just to clarify, uh, not everyone it requires a second stimulator because uh, you know there is some um, um, a group of patients of course with quadriplegic spinal cord injuries unfortunately who do not have good upper body function so for those patients the first option is the, the cervical spinal cord stimulation to restore certain level of upper body function and then the second stimulator is for lower body function um, so many of the patients they have a, a c7 a c6 spinal cord injuries with the uh, incomplete like very um, uh, reasonable upper body function, I would say, where they do not need um, the cervical stim stimulator. And uh, many of the patients, of course, they have para paraplegic spinal cord injuries, like thoracic spinal cord injuries. Um, and then, of course, the only concern is for restora restoration of uh, lower body motor function. So not everyone requires a second stimulator. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, one question from uh, from from a viewer, um, basically very specific question about your um, improvements. You know, like uh, you know maybe uh, you know improvements in your motor function, sensory function. What kind of improvements did you see? Just to you know, just a, basically a short list of improvements from the cervical stimulator. All right, since I'm C4, I don't have my rotator cuff. I am incomplete by the recover that much but I'm able to open and close my hands bend my left arm strain both my arms and um, flip my wrists or push my palm down and uh, basically hold my arm to my chest in the air not enough to feed myself not yet. but I think for people that are maybe like C6 or C5 that can lift their arm up, it will help them a lot to get the cervical stimulator because they can reach out and open and close something. Uh, I think it will help a lot. Also for C4 too, like me, I saw a lot of improvements. And in the legs so far, uh, there's a lot. Like uh, being able to point my toes, bend my leg or extend my leg and things like that. So if you have to basically recommend this treatment to some spinal cord injury patients, how would you recommend and how would you prepare them? Because, uh, you know, I think physical preparation, mental preparation from medical point of view, of course, we always we have always emphasize. Um, so how would you prepare them mentally and physically to go through this kind of treatment? You know, is there a spe specific message you would like uh, to give them? 
you know to make sure you know they have the right expectations i think uh looking at the other testimonials to see what to expect would be nice also to uh do therapy at your hospital if it's possible before you come so that your your muscles are strong uh also putting like electrodes on your body to help out with your muscle strength and if you're going for the legs you got to check for osteoporosis cuz i have osteoporosis so i'm not able to stand yet and i'm working on it maybe in 3 months i'm going to come back to mexico uh where i can stand so I'll definitely get the scan so that if you do have osteoporosis you can work on it with medicine and treatment and stuff like that and uh, be ready for the workouts because it can be tiring but it's fun it's nice to see your body moving again okay um i think that's it we don't have any more questions um so i think just to wrap up is there as like a message like you know one minute message you would like to give to spinal cord injury patients and uh, i think that would be it you know yeah i think uh, a lot of people you know they have a lot of doctors and everything telling you to hey you got to find out how to live the rest of your life injured as you are you know there yeah, there's treatments but they can't really name any so if you want if you really want to uh improve your life and have a chance at a better life then you should get a better stimulation because it's it'll definitely help you and you know the people that get it I think all of them are fighters because they're willing to go to another country to get another surgery and pay money just for a chance to get you know better so I think everybody that's going already has the attitude of no I'm not going to accept what the doctors gave me so i think uh yeah keep fighting yeah well i can endorse yes i mean um, most of the patients are unfortunately young adults you know who naturally had a you know more adventurous nature of course uh, uh, sports accidents you know car accidents uh, uh, but yes yeah, so they are naturally fighters also because you know they are young and of course they have a lot of life you know left so if they can spend this is always my message if they can spend maybe 3 4 years 5 years we really don't know how how long it takes in individual patient uh, that's still you know worth uh, uh, working for you know of course they will have you know many many years of maybe better quality of life you know so this is you know medical point of view this is always my message um so i think uh, uh, that's it thank you very much edward for your time uh, we we believe we have been actually working for whole week 6 days a week from 8 until evening and uh, you know um so we still appreciate your time your and your energy and um, if someone has any questions please feel free to drop in the comment sections or you know um and or just reach out, out to us by our email address and we will try to try to facilitate and thank you very much everyone